Yeah, uh, my name is Adin. Uh, I work on uh, I work on, at a company called Shipyard on IPFS and P2P tooling. Um, and you know, talking about how you know IPFS can be used for science, it's a very broad topic. We have a limited amount of time. Um, I'm going to try and try and cover the basics, and then make sure we have like lots of time to discuss. Uh, it's kind of how I'm thinking we should do this and be like a little more collaborative. So just like to get a, a, a vibe of where we're at, um, can you get like raise your hands if you've like used IPFS tooling to like do a thing? Okay, so we're at like half. Cool. All right, that's good. All right, moving on. So starting with the paradox of the internet, there is this thing called the Streisand effect, which is how come uh, when you try and Censor some data or like try and make it unavailable, it will keep popping up more and more and more frequently as people start paying attention to the thing that you are trying to make hidden. And yet, at the other hand, the thing that you want is somehow not available. Like, how are these both true at the same time? I can't, like, my data is dead and then I also cannot delete data. How is that both possible? Um, and, and sort of the, the answer. One answer for this is that the way that we refer to information is based on where it is, right? Or based on like, not just where it is, but like a, a specific custodian who is in charge of making the data available, right? Like imager.com slash cat picture is like imager's responsibility to make that cat picture available, right? And so lots of people can make it available, which makes it hard to stomp out. But the one you were looking for, the link you clicked on, is is gone, right? Um, which brings us to like, what is IPFS and why? So IPFS is is this concept called uh, about this concept called content addressing, which is to refer to information by what it is, rather than where it is or who created it or who is the current custodian of it. Um, and it makes the data like self-sovereign. The data is responsible for itself, right? The data is named by itself. Um, the links are self-certifying. Uh, and that property allows it allows us to get the data from anyone because we can always verify its correctness. Um, when the data is is you know re referred to by its custodian, only the custodian can assert that it is correct. You can't get the Google website from anybody else because the only one who's qualified to tell you what the Google website is is Google, right? Um, instead, we use this, you know, this this fingerprinting techno, you know, technique, you know, hashing to say the data is represented by this fingerprint. If you see the data, you compute a fingerprint, and they match. You have found the thing, right? Um, IPFS is content addressing, but like with with choices, um, there are different ways and different different types of data you have. Different types of ways you might have to work with it for compliance reasons. You might need to use like FIPS, which is a set of standards around around how you know technologies can be used. You might be working with files or directories or databases, or um, you might have like specific requirements how you work around it. Um, Work and Zara are, are, are two examples um, used in like th this kind of like op open data space um, where they had requirements around how, how they worked with the data and how they wanted it to look so that it um, really represented what, what they needed, right? Mm -hmm. um, which is fine because like really all we care about is like do the fingerprinting thing to make the data self-sovereign um, so that you can you know, keep keep the data. The, the data can is not beholden to whoever the current custodian of it is. Um, so how it works? Uh, this is the 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 publishing side, right? Anytime you've got some data, you've got the person who is publishing the data and the person who is then retrieving the data. On the publishing side, we we take some data, we we basically fingerprint it, we tell people that we have it, and then when people come asking for it, we tell we serve it to them, we give them bytes. Um, on the flip side, you're looking for stuff. Uh, you you ask, you say, who has this fingerprint that I am looking for? You fetch the data from them, and then you verify that fingerprint and make sure that it was correct. 
this is this these two things are are just the tools right they are they are like the exact inverses of each other right tell people we have stuff and can importantly compute the fingerprints and then get the data check it was right um some of the the, the big benefits we get out of content addressable data um are you know verifiability right so you you know the thing that you asked for is the thing you got uh, which is not true with like traditional links necessarily or maybe is not what you expected because it's just whatever the custodian decides to give you at the time you you go to like you know dropbox.com slash the thing that was at the bottom of the link of the academic article that told you that's where their pile of pe their pile of codes of code was and like maybe it gives you that or it could be something else there's like there's no um, there's no verifiability gives you resiliency because there's no one it, you know entity that's responsible for hosting the data anyone who wants to has the ability to effectively co-host the data right so you publish with like a specific publisher and then that publisher turns out to be like a bad custodian of the data they make their paywalls more annoying they delete your data they don't serve it in the right countries okay so you will go somewhere else and every in the links and everything will be okay uh and immutability which you know means that you know what the version was at the time that when you when you load the data right um you you sometimes will see you know you'll you'll follow through uh you know a blog post or a paper or whatever and it will refer to data somewhere else because not everything in the universe will fit in your one object and you'll say say oh no it, it didn't work over here it was slow over here it was it was great over here and then you'll click on it and like it will be something from like last year and it's like that's not what i was looking for i was looking for the thing at the time if i wanted to look at the newer thing i would have a link to whatever the newest version is um, and this also helps with some things like uh like data you know basically a data deduplication and attaching data sets together um I've talked about a few of these. What do we get? There, there's a lot of these. Um, some that that stick out to to me are papers where the assets required to like validate any of it, even if you weren't gonna revalidate all of the like, you know, inject all the mice part of your of your you know study on on genomics yourself. Uh, just the how do I get my graphs? How do I see what data you had and prove that was was right? Sometimes it's like a Dropbox link, which is dead as soon as the PhD student graduates. Sometimes it's a GitHub link, which also is maybe, maybe not. Um, right, Th this has the ability to maintain the papers with their you know, DOI numbers and whatever, as well as the assets, which are like important in making it much less expensive to, to like revalidate. Um, large chunks of, of the work and to like find bugs and someone has a bug in how they generated their graph you shouldn't have to spend like hundreds of thousands of dollars redoing the whole study just to get to the graph validation part of it right which happened at the end um, you know linkable and reusable data sets because uh, some of these are both very large data sets that need to be that may be expensive and need to be co-hosted across a number of, of, of institutions um, for it to be like affordable and usable and also because people will be building sort of parts of a whole um, yeah custody across institutions and and sort of uh, you know interestingly in sort of the um, you know web, web3 environment that you know uh, is going on here in Brussels at the moment, uh, there are a whole bunch of systems being built around new data storage solutions. Um, and sometimes like, sometimes they look cool and sometimes they look scary and sometimes it's both because they're new. Um, and sort of this, this ability to like move the data around and validate that it's correct means that it's much easier to like try out new things without the risk of like, what happens if this thing blows up? Because then you can always go back to something that was like much safer and more familiar. Um, all right, IPFS today. There are like many, many projects and libraries and companies that I could have put here. 
the high level is there are like libraries and SDKs to build with the things. There are people who've prepackaged those into applications. There's people who've prepackaged those applications into services. And then there are some of those services that are like public goods that people can use and run. And those are like, there are lots of each of these things that are available within the ecosystem. Um, I could happily talk about any of the ones that I know about. I, I'm familiar with a bunch because I try and talk to folks. Um, but I know many of us also are, are very new at the IPFS thing today. Uh, so maybe we'll help to just talk 